welcome back to Money's Book List. So as you can see, I'm in a new spot, uh, still in my office, but hopefully this is going to be my permanent filming spot. And as you see, I got my trusty reading cart next to me. Um, this used to be a table right here. Uh, my sewing, my cutting table, which I've moved over and kind of rearranged furniture, took some stuff out of here and just put a whole bunch of stuff in this closet that I don't use. It's all organized. So I'm excited about the space where I'm really excited to have a space where I don't have to keep pivoting. And I think it has really good light. I'm really excited about that. Um, but I do hope to do something really cool with this wall. I'm not doing a bookshelf. I'm not doing that. Um, but I hope to do something really cool behind me on this wall. But we're here to talk about nonfiction November. Uh, so nonfiction November for most people, I know for myself, it is very hard for me to read nonfiction November, mainly because I don't enjoy reading nonfiction because t typically it is an autobiography that most people are pushing on you or like the story of Chernobyl or something like catastrophic or like anything. I, I just don't particularly care for uh, nonfiction in that way. So I wanted to participate in nonfiction because I think it's healthy to like read outside of your comfort zone and also read um, types of books that you don't necessarily uh, would pick, you wouldn't necessarily pick up for the first or you know what I'm saying. So I decided that what areas of nonfiction do I enjoy reading? I like reading self-help books and I enjoy reading history. And then I also wanted to, I, there's this one book that I wanted to read for a very long time and it is a hefty one. So I am going to do it and I am not going to complete reading this book in the month of November and you will know why in a few. So I picked a few books. So the book under the history category, what is this? What is this? Under the history category is about the empires of the sea. It's about the wars that were waged on like, uh, of course, naval battery, bat battles and things like that. And I'm interested in that because I am always interested in European history, African history. I love history. I love the, I love it to, I, I love history because I, I find it interesting that we're not as far removed from those, our ancestors as we believe that we are. So I enjoy reading that kind of like, wow, we will still do some, something dumb like that now. Anyway, so, uh, so our reading is called Empires of the Sea. I'll put a, it's an audio book, so I'll put a picture of it here. Um, yeah, so I'm really excited about that. Next in the self-help category, if you don't know, I've said it before that one of the things um, that I suffer from is anxiety. Um, and it is a direct result of childhood trauma that I um, experienced when living with my grandparents. I don't want to throw them under the bus. I don't want to go too deep in my family history because some of my family does watch these videos and I don't want to put anybody on blast. But I'll just say that um, not not all of my childhood memories were great. And as we know, some people say, oh, I wouldn't give up my, you know, my trauma, you know, the stuff that happened to me was a kid because it made me who I am. It gives you character and all those things, but it all, they also create wounds and they create a lot of life changing things. Like my husband will tell you that one of the things I suffer from uh, with my anxiety is instability. Cause that was a huge thing when we live with my grandparents. Um, I don't like the thought of it. I work a nine to five because it, I need stability. I need to know that this is where I'm going. Um, I wish I could be more, um, I wish I could be more, I do work independently. Like, so I, I pretty much work. I create my own schedule. I do all my work. I have a team of people that work under me. I give them work uh, and things like that, but I have to have a sense of structure. And I didn't have a lot of that. And like, that is one of my biggest anxiety points is like not being able to consistently create and provide structure for my kid, um, especially with her being on the autism spectrum. So it is very hard for me. Like those kind of things give me like when the pandemic hit, the reason why I kind of like stopped filming was because there was that. And then there was like all this instability with 
what was going on with, you know, um, the police br brutality and just all of it was just like upheaval, upheaval and just people protesting and getting shot and then shooting other people. I don't like instability. And I also, along with not liking instability because of the childhood traumas I've encountered as a kid, I am extremely protective. Um, like to the point where it's detrimental to the people I'm protective of and also to myself. And it took me a long time to accept and, and understand that in myself that you can protect someone too much. I don't know why I'm getting emotional about it, but uh, so it's hard for me to deal with my anxiety because my anxiety, it, 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 for some people, people, when they have anxiety, they shut down. I'm like, how do I fix this shit? How do I, how do I get to a point where I can feel the stability? You know, is someone in danger? How do I protect them? So, uh, I picked up a book to help me work on, and it's a workbook. I, I don't, I will not stand here and endorse it. Cause I literally just picked it up and I'm hoping it works for me. Um, I've heard good things about it. I've read, uh, good reviews on it. And I also, um, I also understand that my psychiatrist or my counselor, sorry, my camera's a little wonky, sorry. My counselor also uh, endorsed a, a workbook like this. So this book, I won't technically finish this in October, but I will start it. And it's called Anxiety and Phobia Workbook. And it has like, tons of things you do to like understand like the triggers that you're encountering like for me eating candy that tastes like armpits was triggering it was very <laughs> it was on my it was on my instagram anyway so i picked up this and this is my self-help book this is non-fiction and i'm hoping that it's going to help me so i'm going to start on it start on the activity some of the activities you use when you're in the counseling session some of them you can do on you by yourself so I am excited. This is the sixth edition. They have a seventh edition. I got it from Amazon. I enjoyed the reviews on it. Um, yeah, so I'm excited. I think the biggest con most people said was that some of the activities, a lot of people are looking for stuff they can just do by themselves, but some of them, the, the activities in here, you actually should be doing with a counselor. So if you have a counselor, this is also good. I don't think it will prevent you if you don't have a counselor to do some of these sessions or do some of the activities in here. And then the last book I wanted to read and start reading was, I'll show it to you. Now, before I show you this book, understand that I don't consider myself a Christian and I don't consider, I don't, when I say that, I don't mean like, oh, I don't believe in God. I believe in God more than you know. I don't believe that, I believe, let me say this, there's nothing that can convince me that he doesn't exist because there's nothing, there's just nothing. I was raised extremely religious. Do you understand me? Extremely like, like, I don't even understand. I don't even know how to tell you like how ingrained religion is in me. Like it is, it, it, and unlearning some of the bad things of church that church taught me is hard. But I said all that to say that I will be reading or starting the King James version, uh, King James Bible. Now this is a study Bible. And the reason why I'm reading the Bible, not, I, I, I don't want to be defensive on why I'm reading the Bible. Like, oh, I'm not reading it for this or for that. I might get inspiration. I'm, I'm actually praying to be inspired by the, the books of the Bible and the lessons that, you know why I picked this Bible. Let me explain this more. So this is a, is this is a, a study Bible and this provides context. It provides like the the original language it was written in. And if like, say there's a word that doesn't technically have a translation in English, it will give you like the closest translation it can in the, the like, like in, um, like, I'm not explaining this right. So basically it will try to provide you as much context around that word to tell you exactly what it meant. It will tell you who wrote this book of the Bible, um, uh, what region of the country or the world they wrote it in and things like that. So when I was a kid, this, the Bible scared me because all I knew of the Bible was fire and brimstone. And then, oh yeah, by the way, Jesus loves you. Um, 
So I wanted to read it for myself to study, study it in context. And I'm not just going to be reading it. I'm actually listening to it too. Along with listening to it, I'm going to pair it up with just additional context about the countries and, and uh, that were around uh, at the time the Bible was written and that kind of stuff. Because if you understand someone's faith, you can understand them. And if you understand them, you most likely will find that you have more in common with them than you think you don't. I feel this way about every religion. I am hu- I love, I love people. I love people who have faith because to have faith means you have hope. And usually faith is based in some type of, usually, don't, don't come at me about any, I'm saying usually, I may be speaking kind of ignorant about it. I openly admit that. So before you come at me, understand that I am openly understand, openly admitting that I may be speaking a little ignorant about it. Again, I am not, those are the books I'll be reading for nonfiction in November. Uh, I really, I believe that all the stuff I'm reading is going to inspire me. I'm so excited to read the Bible in context. I'm so excited to read it for uh, just inspiration. I do believe I will be inspired by the Bible. Um, I do there. I do believe that. I do believe that this book will help me with my anxiety. I do believe these two paired together will help me. So I'm excited about that. And then of course, um, Empires of the Sea, a history book that is told in novel format. You, you just had to say history really for me to want to pick up that book. So very quickly, the other books I'm scheduled or are planning to read in the month of, oh, so very quickly, uh, also, I will be only reading in November. I will only try to finish the book of Genesis, and that is a hefty one, okay? So other books I will be reading in the month of November that are, that are actually fiction, excuse me, uh, are comic books. I'm reading the collection of... Batgirl. I'm reading Batgirl uh, by two different creators, I believe. I'm reading volumes one, two, and three from one uh, from Hope. Let me just put it up here. From by Hope Larson, Chris Wild Goose, John Lim, and Matt Loops. So I'm reading the first. I think I want to say the first four volumes of this. Actually, no. Yeah, the first three volumes of Batgirl. Uh, very interesting. I know a lot of people don't really like comic books, but they're very they're very compelling. I really enjoy them. And then I'm reading Batgirl and the Birds of Prey. Now, before you're like, oh, they wrote this book because of the movie. That is so not true. Let me explain to you. The, the movie you saw of Harley Quinn is a comic book that was written in 2003. They stole, well, they, I shouldn't say they stole. They adapted the story from that comic book and then adapted this, this name, The Birds of Prey, uh, from another comic book. So I'm reading the first volume of this, and this is by Julia Benson, Shauna Benson, Claire Rowe, and I want to say his name is Raj Antonio or Roge Antonio. So yeah, that's it. I think I have another group. I think I think I think I have another Batgirl comic book to read, but I'm doing this thing where I'm trying to read more of the women characters in the comic book world because they don't really highlight them a hell of a lot unless they half naked. No judgment, a lot of judgment. So I'm gonna get off here because I actually am gonna try to film two more videos so I can get editing, get videos up for the month of November. I'm sorry I've been gone, but I kind of hurt myself when I was doing all this renovation. I actually got confirmation today that I didn't damage myself as much as I thought I did. Thanks to be God. Uh, and um, so, yeah, so that's why I was gone. Um, also, I think I told you guys on Instagram, one weekend I didn't film because I was waiting for my daughter's bed. This bed is so kick-ass. It is so kick-ass. So I was waiting for my daughter's bed and it didn't show up until the following Friday. And so it ruined my entire week of planning and that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna get out of here. This hair is a mess. I just sweat, I sweat out all these damn dang curls. I just talk, see, all right, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go because I, I, need, I need Jesus. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. Bye for now. Mm-hmm.